So I am Dr. Rita McGuire, Chief Medical Officer, one of the co-founders here at Wakana. And tonight we're gonna to be really talking about CBD. We're gonna be talking about staph infections. We're gonna talk about strep infections. And I'm telling you, this was not even on my radar, but one of my favorite, and you guys know you're all my favorites, but one of my favorite business partners here at Wakana really wanted me to talk about this. Um, topic and it is really important topic to talk about. Um, again, I'm the chief medical officer and I represent the pillar of health. Um, so each and every Wednesday, it's really exciting. You should join and you should invite your healthcare professional to join too, because we always talk about a different topic, a different challenge that maybe not you may be facing, but someone in your family, maybe someone at at the job, maybe someone in your community could be facing, you absolutely can be the solution for them resolving. So I'm a mom of three adult children, yay. Only one is still on my payroll and that's that baby girl at the end, but my oldest is in the middle. He'll be 30 uh, in January. Uh, the middle child who's always that uh, charismatic um, person there, he is uh, 24, and then my daughter is 22. So all three are grown, but just one is on my payroll. And yes, I'm an obstetrician gynecologist, still practicing, um, as well as kind of transition my OB part, you know, the delivering baby part, to more cosmetic surgery. So I do do two calls a night here at Roseland Hospital. In fact, I'm on call. And of course, there's two people in labor and you heard my phone, that was a nurse trying to call me. Um, so they have to allow me to be great, right? Uh, so we can talk about this important information. Three years ago, the CEO of this company, Melissa Boston introduced me to cannabis industry. You know, it wasn't even on my radar, but when she said CBD, and I was very embarrassed because I didn't know what CBD was three years ago. I did my due diligence. And you know, I've always been that type of physician that did their due diligence. I wasn't that type of doc that you come to and say, hey doc, can I take this herb? I wasn't that one that would say no. I would always research because I wanna one, make sure that there's no interactions with whatever medication you may be on and two, I want my patients to have an option, an organic, holistic option. So here I am testifying in front of the Judiciary Committee as an ob -GYN, the governor of Illinois asked me to testify because I've been working in the field for three years at that point to testify for the legalization of cannabis, for adult use cannabis. You know, I've witnessed thousands of patients to get relief, to be able to come off medications, to really regain the quality of their life back from this plant. We're gonna talk about this plant first, and then we're gonna talk about our topic second. And then we're gonna talk about our products third. And so the cannabis plant has over 85 cannabinoids or compounds that it makes. The two common compounds are one, THC, that's the part of the plant that gets you high. It gives you the paranoia. If you consume too much, you'll get the munchies. And then there's CBD or cannabidiol. That's a part of the plant that does not get you high. It doesn't give you the munchies. It doesn't get you paranoid, but what it does do, it gives you the health benefits without the high. And one of the most important health benefits that we rarely talk about is that CBD is a very powerful antibacterial properties it has. It can kill bacteria, it can slow the growth of bacteria. It is a very potent antibiotic. But when we break down the two different species of the cannabis plant, we look at marijuana which contains high levels of that THC. That's why when you consume marijuana, you get high because it has so much THC in it, right? But then there's another species called the hemp species. And that's the part 
that has trace amounts of THC, large percentages of CBD. So the hemp species gives you the health without the high. And so what we're gonna talk about is we're gonna concentrate on CBD. We're gonna concentrate on its medicinal properties and all of the benefits that it offers the body. So again, CBD stands for cannabidiol. It is the most common compound found in the hemp species. Again, unlike THC, it doesn't get you high. And I can't stress that enough. None of our products get you high. So if you tuned into this webinar looking for a product to get you high, you're on the wrong webinar, right? These products give you balance. These products help to address what we're going to talk about tonight, and that's bacterial infections without the high. In fact, there are hundreds of medicinal properties that CBD offers, you know, from reducing pain to helping relieve anxiety to reducing inflammation. And when we talk about a bacterial infection like staph, it is effective against a bacterial infection like staph because it reduces the inflammation. CBD also helps to address mental illness like psychosis, like anxiety, like depression. It also can help to stimulate the appetite in those who may be undergoing chemotherapy or, or some treatment for cancer. It can also help for you to lose weight. Is that crazy? It can stimulate your appetite, but it can also help reduce your appetite and increase your metabolism. It's a very, very smart chemical. Um, CBD is also very, very important in those who are diabetic. It can help manage blood sugar. It can help to inhibit cancer cell growth. But tonight we're gonna to talk about how CBD can kill, it can kill and even slow bacterial growth. So when we look at CBD, even as an antibiotic, it is able to reduce inflammation, reduce the growth of bacteria. And there's actually a study, it was a very, very profound study done in Denmark. And it showed that when people use CBD with their antibiotic, it actually helped to increase the resolution of the infection when CBD was added to the antibiotic. So it actually helped to slow the bacterial overgrowth and help to address the bacteria and using less antibiotics. And we're gonna talk about why that's so important, right? And I was always a physician that never just handed out antibiotics, right? There is a risk of always giving a patient antibiotics if they had a cough or a sneeze, because then you can become resistant when you really need an antibiotic to work. And we'll talk about MRSA and how important that is not to overuse antibiotics. Now there's other compounds that the plant makes that you should know about. So it's not just CBD and THC, but THCA and CBG and CBN and CBC and THCV and CBDA. There's a lot of cannabinoids that are important when we talk about our full spectrum products that give you that synergy and potency when we're addressing even a bacterial infection. So how does CBD work? Well, there's a science behind how CBD works. It's not some magical potion or snake oil. The science is called the endocannabinoid system. And this system is really intriguing to understand when this system was discovered just in the 1990s when I was in medical school. But this system helps to put our body back in balance in such a vital regulatory system that it is deemed actually more important than the circulatory system, the musculoskeletal system, all those systems we learned in, in grammar school and high school, this system is the one that puts our body back in balance or what we call homeostasis. And we all have an endocannabinoid system. If you have a spine, you have an endocannabinoid system. And this system needs to be in balance. So when we consume CBD, 
our body is achieving its optimal health because there are receptors that are found throughout our entire body that's looking for cannabis. It's looking for the constituents that this cannabis plant makes like CBD and THC and the other cannabinoids we talked about. There are 10 main receptors that are found in the eyes, the lung, the kidney, the bowel, the skin, which is a really important part because staph affects the skin. Uh, the stomach, you know, there's something called, and we're going to learn about this tonight, staph food poisoning, uh, the bowel, the teeth, the heart, and the brain. So again, these receptors are looking for CBD to put the body back in balance. So when we talk about CBD products, it's important that you understand that our products here at Wakana are not only unique, but they're tested and they're compliant not only with the State Department of Agriculture, but they're also compliant with the Farm Bill. The 2018 Farm Bill, after 80 years, now allows CBD that comes from hemp to be legally sold, consumed, and cultivated in all 50 states. So it's important to have a product that you trust. It's important to have a product that's tested. It's important to have a product that's in compliance with all of these things. So our products are third party tested. And yesterday during our webinar, someone asked what that meant. And hopefully that person is on this webinar tonight because we didn't have time to really talk about what third party testing means. And it's critical during these times when CBD is now legal and people are making CBD in their basement. They're making it in their garage. You know, you find CBD at the gas station, but there are really a lot of unethical CBD companies that are using fillers. They're using hemp seed oil and they're selling it as it's CBD. Now hemp seed oil, even though it sounds like the species hemp, doesn't contain CBD. It's very nutritional, but it won't give you the antibacterial properties that we're gonna talk about today that you may be looking for, or it doesn't contain the properties that help with anxiety that you're looking for. So having a product that's third party tested is critical in this marketplace. We have partnered with one of the leading labs in Florida called Green Scientific. They have the state of the art equipment that does all of our testing on every single product that we sell at Wakana. In fact, every product at Wakana has a certificate of analysis, which shows you the potency of our product. It also identifies the terpenes that are in our products. It identifies the fact that there's no pesticides in our products. There's no heavy metals. There's no yeast or mold or, or salmonella. Uh, in our products. There's no residual solvents. There's no residual butane or, or alcohol or propane, none of that. So it's critical to have these certificates of analysis to ensure there's no heavy metals, that this is a product that's safe and effective for use. So let's talk about staph. Staph, and how do you even get a staph infection? Well, staph is a bacteria that is really growing in numbers, we're seeing in even healthy people. See, this bacteria can live on your skin. It's commonly found in the nose. That's why if some of you moms out there, if you breastfed, you might've had an infection called mastitis. That's because the baby's nose had staph which then infected the nipple and causes a bad infection. We see that a lot in ob -GYN. It's also can be found on the skin and the hands of people that are making your food, right? So you can even have something called staph food poisoning, right? You have a lot of GI upset, vomiting, diarrhea, yucky, yucky, yucky. That means you ate at a place where someone did not wash their hands. And it can become deadly. These infections, if they're left untreated, can get into the bloodstream. They can affect your joints, your bones, your lungs, and your heart. So I am so glad that my business partner, Cuzzo, 
made me do this presentation because staph infections can be deadly. You know, we typically in medicine see staph infections that affect the skin, like a cellulitis. You have a lot of redness, uh, burning, and a lot of pain when you have that superficial infection. But again, if this is left untreated, it can lead into a bloodstream infection, which can cause an endocarditis, can affect your heart. It can cause a bone infection, an osteomyelitis can affect your bones, which is a terrible infection to have, or thrombophlebitis can affect the blood vessels. Now, again, staph food poisoning is an awful one, and that's from somebody preparing your food at a fast food restaurant. That's why I rarely eat at fast food restaurants, because folks who don't wash their hands can infect your food. About 25% of people and animals have staph on their skin and their nose. So it's important that you understand that even food poisoning can come from a staph food infection. And then there's another infection I want to talk about quickly, and that's strep. You've got staph and then you've got strep. Strep is responsible for sore throat. You have strep throat. You know about that. That's a picture of someone's throat that's really infected. Uh, pneumonia, meningitis. We see strep a lot in pregnancies called group B strep, where a baby can die if we as ob don't treat our moms who have group B strep. So these are really deadly, deadly infections. So what do we use to treat staph and strep infections? If you know the answer, I want you to put it down right there in the chat box. What do we use to treat staph and strep infections? Well, I'm not going to stop sharing my um, screen because then I'll lose my slides, but antibiotics, that's what we typically use to treat staph and strep infections. So if you said antibiotics, you are right. But what's so scary now is this. This is salt called MRSA, methicillin resistant staph aureus. This is a deadly infection that can kill you if you are that person that runs to the doctor every time you get sick and that doctor gives you an antibiotic, right? So many times that that happens over the years, your body can become resistant. So now that when we give you an antibiotic, it doesn't work. So MRSA is methicillin resistant staph aureus. It's a bacteria that becomes resistant to many antibiotics like methicillin, penicillin, amoxicillin, you know, cephalosporin, and it can become very, very deadly. In fact, 80,000 people get MRSA infection every year. And guess what? 11,000 people die every year from this very, very deadly infection. So that's why we want to really educate you about the use of CBD, about the use of our amazing products here at Wakana so that when there is a staph infection, when there is a skin infection, when there is a food poisoning going on, when there is um, an area in your uh, throat with a strep infection, uh, a cellulitis, a boil, you know, a lot of staph infections. Have you seen people get boils all the time? We can talk about how CBD can assist with those conditions. So first, our disclaimer that these statements and products have not been approved by the FDA. If you're pregnant, nursing, or medication, please consult your physician. We cannot make any claims that CBD can cure, mitigate, treat, diagnose any staph or strep infections, but absolutely the science is there that shows that CBD cannabidiol can help to reduce or slow bacteria growth when we talk about staph and strep infections. So that's a copy of our COA, that's in the wrong spot. But how do you take CBD? Well, there's several different ways of taking CBD. So let's say you do have a staph infection. Let's say you go and get your nails done, right? And you start to see swelling and pain around the cuticle, right? You have a staph infection. 
It's been introduced by maybe a dirty instrument and now your finger is swollen, it's big. Um, and so whenever you're talking about a skin infection, you never wanna put CBD on that area. You wanna consume it by ingesting it. And the best way is through using our tincture by placing it the oil underneath your tongue, holding it for about 60 seconds before you swallow. That is the best way when you're talking about infections of the skin is using our tincture. Now, our most potent tinctures are Hempranium MD. Now, this is something you want to use for a more severe staph or strep infection, right? And despite the severity, you always want to start CBD slow and low. You always want to start with three drops twice a day. You may ask why. The reason being is if you introduce CBD too much, too quick, then potentially your, your, your loved one, your customer, your client may have a side effect. And the side effects aren't terrible, but they're uncomfortable. Excessive fatigue, or maybe you could get a little nauseated from too much CBD too fast. So start low and slow, three drops in the morning, three drops in the evening. After four or five days, you can increase it to eight drops or 15 drops twice a day. That's the maximal dose. Now, this particular product is 750 milligrams of CBD in a 15 ml bottle. Again, it's a great product for a more severe challenge with a staph or strep infection. Then our Hempranium 500. This is a very, very unique product because we have a proprietary formula on our Hempranium 500. We've enhanced the CBD with black seed, turmeric, and peppermint. All three of those certified organic oils that we added to our CBD reduces inflammation. It helps to reduce bacterial overgrowth and growth. This is 500 milligrams in a 15 ml bottle. But again, starting low and slow with three drops twice a day is a great way to start. Now, this particular product is a great product if you have mild to moderate infection, right? It's not severe, but you want to start out with that Hempranium 500 and not the Hempranium MD, which would be more for a severe infection going on. Let's talk about using the CBD in another way, and that's through our Power Water Soluble. See, this is a great product because you don't have to hold it underneath your tongue, but you can put it in your water. You can put it in your food. Uh, you can put it in your juice. Again, three drops twice a day is a great way to start the Power Water Soluble. It, again, is 500 milligrams. Uh, in a 15 ml bottle. Now, the power products, I meant to mention this, the power products are our products that contain the legal limit of THC. Now, the legal limit of THC in the United States is 0.3% or less. THC at 0.3% or less will not get you high. It is a very, very, very small amount of THC. Again, none of our products get you high, but what is important to understand, if you have random drug screens at your job, you're going to want to use our other product called our pure or broad spectrum product that contains less than 0.0% of THC. So our power products are in the black label. Those are the products. If you don't have random drug screens at your job, you're dealing with a staph or a strep infection, you want to address that along with the antibiotic possibly that your doctor has given you. Those are the products, the power. Then we have a power culinary product. So this is a product for those. And you know what, guys, I've been seeing more and more people that have a sensitivity to turmeric. So this is a product that is unflavored. It doesn't have the additional turmeric, black seed, and peppermint. It's just a unflavored tincture that you can also bake or cook with. So that's the advantage of using this particular product. You can bake with it, you can cook with it, 
or you can put it underneath your tongue and use it as an unflavored tincture. Again, start low, start slow, three drops twice a day. It's 500 milligrams of CBD in the entire bottle. So again, if you have a mild to moderate staph, strep infection that you're trying to address, this would be the product for you. Now, a lot of folks will ask me, how much CBD would I take if I am dealing with a cellulitis or if I'm dealing with a strep throat? Well, you can actually dose CBD on your body weight and severity of the infection, or you can just leave all of the guesswork to us and go with our recommended dosing that's on the bottle and the recommended dosing that's on the website and the recommended dosing that's on those product fact sheets that you guys are going to be getting very, very soon. But if you want to dose according to weight and severity, you can take a screenshot of this particular chart and you can dose by weight and severity of the condition as well. Our gummies are another way of consuming CBD. Um, gummies can be taken throughout the day. I particularly like taking the gummies at night. Why at night? Well, it can address the inflammation. It can address this uh, infection that you are addressing and its symptoms by taking a half a gummy to one gummy every night. Now, our gummies are very potent. That's why I always say start with half a gummy because our gummies are infused. They're not coated. So with an infused gummy, it's going to work a lot more uh, effectively than those gummies that are on the marketplace that are just coated. So start with half a, half a gummy. Each gummy is 25 milligrams of CBD. Our gummies are vegan. They're non-GMO. They're also going to help you sleep as you are going through addressing the inflammation and the uh, staph or strep infection. You know, when you have those infections, it causes a lot of discomfort, a lot of pain. Our gummies come in a bottle, they come in a four pack, uh, pack count as well. Um, and on the very right is an example of that broad spectrum that I was talking about. Those are the products that if you have random drug screens, you're gonna want to use our pure gummies, our pure tinctures, that contain less than 0.0% of THC. Now, these topical pain products, please do not use a topical pain product if you're dealing with a staph infection of the skin and the skin is open. Please do not put on a topical if the skin is open. We don't want that, right? Because that will cause a lot more pain and inflammation from the essential oils that may burn that area. So these topical products are truly, truly used for that referred pain. I don't know if you've ever encountered strep throat and you've got a lot of discomfort there. You absolutely can take just a tip of the cream and rub it on that surrounding area of discomfort. But do not put topicals on any open skin infection. Very important. So our extreme power cream is 400 milligrams of CBD. It's loaded with certified organic essential oils that help address inflammation, that help address uh, pain relief uh, and discomfort. We also have a 500 milligram CBD topical. We have a liquid form. It's not in a cream form called our Dr. Rita's Rub. 200 milligrams of CBD loaded with 19 to 20 organic certified essential oils. Please use these topically only. Do not apply them to open wounds or open skin. Now, our smokable products are great for fast relief. We're talking about acute relief that you're wanting uh, in one to five minutes. Those are our vape cartridges, our pre-rolls, and our flour, right? Our cartridges, again, are using the power products. 
the legal limit of 0.3% or less of THC, if you have random drug screens, you will not be able to use any of our smokable products because they all contain the legal limit of THC. But if you don't have random drug screens, our cartridges, our pre-rolls are amazing. You only need one to three pulls two to three times a day to help reduce that bacterial infection that may be addressed in staph and strep infections. Why would you vape the flower versus you know, smoking the flower? Our flower is premium flower. There are vape pens where you can vape the flower and have less of a combustible in, uh, inhalation that occurs when you smoke. So that is one of the things that you can do. I love the strain that we offer. We offer the Electra strain, which is in our pre-roll, in our flower. It is a strain that helps to reduce anxiety. It's helping to uh, relax you and to help to also address the bacterial infection that we see in staph and strep. Again, that is the pen that I use to vape my flower, the Yocan Evolve D. You know, vaping and smoking and our smokable products are not for everyone. There are also states that prohibit smokable hemp. Uh, those states are Kentucky, Louisiana, North Carolina, and Indiana. So just know that there are some states where there is a ban. But overall, these are products that you can use and then our pure product. This is our pure tincture for those who may want to address staph or strep, but have random drug screens at their job. Our pure product is 300 milligrams of CBD. Again, start low, start slow, three drops twice a day. You can increase that with a maximum of 15 drops a day. Now, what I love about our pure products is that we have an enhanced technology called nanotechnology. This is a technology that allows this tincture that you place under the tongue to be more available. So the bioavailability to the body is at 98.7%. So it's a great, great product, even though it doesn't contain that 0.3% or less of THC, it's a product that's still, that's gonna be very effective for you if you have random drug screens. So that is the end of our presentation. I'm gonna take questions now. Um, if I don't get to your question tonight, please take down my email, RitaMD at wakana.com. I, I wanna give all credit to you know, my business partner, Cuzzo, Mr. Gerald West, because this is a really important uh, topic to talk about. Lots of folks suffer from boils, lots of folks suffer from staph and strep infections, and absolutely CBD can be used as an adjunct, as an enhancer, along with antibiotics when we're dealing with those sort of infections. So if you have questions, you can put them here in the chat. Uh, our medical advisory board, if you guys wanna chime in and uh, ask a question or, or help me answer some of these questions, uh, you can do that. Let's see here. Let's see, questions, questions. If you have a staph infection like MRSA, will you be likely to get again? Absolutely. You can get staph and MRSA over and over again. Uh, it's very prevalent, again, in the skin, in the nose. Um, you wanna make sure that, you know, even during this global pandemic, that you are washing your hands regularly, that you are, you know, making sure that you're not eating out a lot because staph food poisoning is really awful. It's a very, very uncomfortable thing to have. Uh, someone said antibiotics or CBD. You want to make sure that if you are uh, prescribed antibiotics, the study out of Denmark shows that when you add CBD onto the antibiotics that your doctor may put you on, that the CBD helps to resolve the infection 
a lot faster than just with the antibiotics alone. So if you want to email me, I can shoot you over that study that was done out of Denmark. It's pretty fascinating to know that CBD helps to slow and to kill antibacterial uh, infections. Can it help the big toe fungus? Oh yes, CBD can help with fungal, uh, bacterial, and there's studies that even show with viral infection. So whenever you have a systemic infection, that means it's you know within the bloodstream, it's starting to affect your skin, your body, your toes. You wanna use the product uh, under the tongue. You never wanna use the product again on areas that potentially can be open wounds or open sores. Can it help with cancer? Well, you know, we can't make any claims, but there's lots of studies that show that CBD can inhibit and slow the growth of cancer cells. So those studies are out there. Again, you can email me and I can shoot you over any study that you'd like to see, but very, very effective as well. Now, this is a long, is this a long question? The, this potential client has glaucoma without diabetes. Is there anything that can reverse the damage to the optic nerve? What regimen of product? Anthony Morris, Crown Jewel. Ooh, that's a novel, I think. Um, that is from, I think that's Anthony Morris. So the studies on glaucoma show that CBD, um, in glaucoma, you know, when we talk about glaucoma in 1960s, a gentleman by the name of Randall, Mr. Robert Randall sued the government because cannabis was the only treatment that, that reduced the inflammation and the pressure on his optic nerve. And he had to sue the government because, you know, cannabis is illegal. Um, and he, never went blind. He was able to um, reduce the pressure in the eye, but the studies show that when you're talking about glaucoma, uh, the studies show that you shouldn't use any more than 40 milligrams of CBD. You don't need high doses to address inflammation of the optic nerve or even the pressure in the eye. So no more than 40 milligrams. What does that mean? No more than three drops in the morning, three drops in the evening, and one gummy um, should put you at about 25 or 30 milligrams of CBD. One power gummy alone is 25 milligrams. Any questions in the Q&A? Parkinson's, yes. We've talked about Parkinson's, yeast infections, yes. UTIs, yes. We talk about CBD. When we talk about infections, infections, uh, there's a part of infections that is inflammatory. So CBD is an anti-inflammatory. It's actually antifungal, it's an antibacterial, antiviral. So there are studies that show that when you use CBD and you may be on an antibiotic for your UTI, your urinary tract infection, it will help to slow the progression of the bacterial overgrowth and will help to resolve that infection a lot quicker than those people who don't have CBD along with their antibiotics. So yes, the answer is yes to yeast, yes to viral and bacterial infections. If someone has had a hole in their heart and now has a pump, what product would you recommend? Um, I don't know what sort of hole they have in their heart. So Letitia Harper, if you could find out from that customer, um, there's a lot of things that could be holes in your heart. It could be a heart murmur. It could be a valve. Um, you'll have to email me at RitaMD at Wakana.com for those details. Endometriosis. Yes, endometriosis is a very, very uh, painful condition that we deal with in gynae. It's painful menstruation. It also comes with infertility. Um, and it's the result of menstrual blood not going out, but going retrograde. So the menstrual blood starts to implant on your tubes, on your ovaries, on your sacrum, on your bowel. Very, very painful. So whenever we're dealing with inflammatory cells, 
like an endometriosis, CBD can assist with those symptoms of reducing inflammation and reducing pain. You can use the topical pain in areas of endometriotic pain, uh, but absolutely if you have an endometrioma or if you have significant implants, uh, typically that means you may have to have surgery long-term. Wonderful. Yeah, whenever you're dealing with infection, inflammation, thyroid, parathyroid, diabetes, obesity, hypertension, inflammation, CBD is an anti-inflammatory. Again, we can't make claims. All we can say is that, you know, do your due diligence. Uh, I invite you to use your favorite search engine, put CBD in parathyroid, put CBD in um, endometriosis, put CBD in glaucoma. Use your favorite search engine and look at all of the data, all of the research. There's over 20,000 peer review articles. And we talked about last night, when we're dealing with challenges that are pretty severe, you need to layer these products. One gummy is not going to do it, right? We want you to use the tincture twice a day, use the topical, use the gummies at night, use the pre-rolls or the cartridges, change your diet. You know, CBD is not magical. I talk about that all the time. When you have inflammation in your body and you're still eating fried food and processed food, that inflammation is not going to be effectively relieved by the CBD with a poor diet. So the combination of diet, lifestyle, CBD, water, sleep, all of these things are very, very, very important in reducing inflammation. Any other questions? Let's see. Yes, mental health, all of that. You know, if you're a guest on the line, you want to contact the person who invited you because I have a whole YouTube of so many topics from mental health to thyroid to seizures. Um, to migraines, to arthritis. I've got so much information out there that can't be covered on a one hour call. Please get that information. Contact the person who invited you so you can get these products. You can get on their website. You can order these products and really be a, you know, a blessing to those who, who you know that may have issues with staff, with boils, with skin infections, with strep, and all of the other conditions that you guys are asking about tonight. Charlotte Perry, please, please contact the person who invited you. I have a whole mental health um, dialogue for you on that. Any other questions you guys see? I think... There was one, Dr. Rita, there was one question on, is the topical scented? Um, it's scented with essential oils. So it's uh, scented with amazing peppermint and eucalyptus and spearmint and menthol. So yes, it's scented with natural certified organic essential oils. Did you see any other questions? Well, I really pray that um, Kuzo, your, your, your clients on the line, and hopefully that I was able to uh, be clear that yes, that CBD can help to assist with staph infections, strep infections, MRSA, uh, that antibiotics are something that many of us have been on. We want to limit antibiotic use. Um, because it can cause methicillin resistance to aphoria. So when you really need it, those antibiotics don't work. Um, and you want to ensure that you're using a, a product that's tested, like our products here at Wakana, that can assist you through those times that you do have an infection and you're on antibiotics. Yes, I see you, Kazo. 
You are so welcome. Well, have a great night. I'm going to go upstairs and do what I do, deliver these babies every Wednesday night. But thank you guys. We'll see you next Wednesday. Same time, same link, same task code. Uh, and we'll talk to you there. Thank you guys.